enzymes, which are the catalysts that run our organs. Without them, our organs would shut down, we would die. Some of us have probably heard of people dying because their organs shut down. No more metabolic enzymes to run the organs. The other type of enzyme in our body are the digestive. And if we didn't have digestive enzymes, we couldn't turn the food that we eat into the cells of our body. We wouldn't break them down. We would literally starve to death. So those same digestive enzymes that we manufacture and secrete to break down those foods to turn them into the cells of our body are present in living foods. Once foods are cooked, approximately 118, these enzymes start to become uh, destroyed and die off. When we eat a food that is high in enzymes, those enzymes help us break down that food, turn them into the cells of our body, so our body doesn't have to secrete as many enzymes. I'll give you a little example. You have a green banana, then it turns yellow. Then it's yellow with brown speckles. There was starch digesting enzymes called amylase in that banana that were specific to the type of starch in that banana. They ripened it and then they started to turn it black, essentially composting it. You eat that ripe banana, easy to digest, tastes good. Those enzymes will go in, help us break it down, and our body won't have to secrete as many digestive enzymes to break it down. Of course, the banana's cooked, and we do have to secrete more enzymes to break it down. What I'm getting at is that we don't want to have the body work as hard to create so many digestive enzymes. And here's where it all comes from. Research done by Dr. Edward Howell and other researchers have found that all beings, human or otherwise, have a genetic potential for how many enzymes we can manufacture and secrete in a lifetime. Dr. Howell liked to call it the enzyme bank account. And when the enzyme bank account runs out, the being's life ends. What they found was when the enzyme bank account starts to run low, with many people, it's in their 30s, the body will steal the precursors that are supposed to be going to make metabolic enzymes to run our organs, take those away, turn them into digestive enzymes to digest our food. And when that happens, we suffer an enzyme labor shortage in our organs or different systems of our body. So in other words, we won't have as many metabolic enzymes to perform the tasks that we need done. Here's one little example. In order to put the color in our hair shaft, it's known as melanin, we need an enzyme called tyrosinase. Our body will take away the precursors from enzymes that are not as important for the body staying alive, like the ones that put the color in the hair shaft. We'll take away those metabolic enzymes first to use to make digestive enzymes, to digest that big wad of enzyme deficient food sitting in your stomach. So one of the first signs with most people, you just start to see gray hairs appear. And now I see a lot of people getting gray hairs at 20 years old, they're starting to appear. It's uh, more and more common these days. So what we want to do is try to conserve our enzyme bank account, try to eat enzyme rich foods, foods that are easier to digest. Most of us have heard of fermented foods. They're kind of pre-digested, easier to digest. Most fruits that are ripe are very easy to digest. Vegetables, for most people, tend to be easy to digest. They have the enzymes in them. Of course, like we mentioned, cooked foods are enzyme deficient. Although they might be broken down, the fibers may have been exploded from the cooking, so they're soft and you can easily chew them up and break apart they don't have the enzymes in them to help actually break down those molecules to their tiniest particles to turn them into the cells of our body. So occasionally I do eat some food that's been cooked, like quinoa, and when I do that type of thing, I'll take a digestive enzyme supplement. Some of us probably use them. There are two types of digestive enzyme supplements that are generally found in most stores. Plant-based enzymes are the type I recommend and the type that I use. Is those type of digestive enzymes have a uh, broad range of pH that they work in. 
So our stomach might be acid or alkaline or anything in between, depending on what we've eaten. And the plant-based enzymes will go in there and help us break, break them down, kind of conserving our enzyme bank account. The other type that you'll often find in health food stores, they're animal-derived enzymes, which have a very narrow range of pH in which they'll help us break down our food. So if our stomach acid doesn't happen to be that pH, those enzymes might not help us break down our food. You might just have wasted your money. The other thing that's a concern to me is that animals get diseases that are transmittable to humans. There's a whole section in my book called zoonoses. And you'd be absolutely shocked to see all the different diseases animals can get and transfer to humans. Well, because when they kill the animal to take the enzymes out, you can't ask the animal, hey, are you sick? That animal might have some type of virus or some other disease. If it went undiagnosed, then those viruses, prions, or other type of pathogens could still be present in that enzyme supplement because you can't cook it to heat it, and you might get more than you bargained for with that type of supplement. So for those two reasons, I recommend the plant-based enzymes if you're going to use enzymes to help you break down your food.